Hello, it's Karen here today. Thanks for joining me as I'd like to show you how to, I made this little wooden heart. I started off with some gold paint. I gathered together the things that I thought I'd use to decorate the heart. And I started off with the gold Aztec metallic to paint the little grunge board key and also the nylon ribbon that I'd, uh, that I'd cut. So the grunge board key is quite porous and soaked up plenty of paint straight away. The nylon, of course, is not porous and the paint pretty much sits on top or in the case of lace goes through the holes as well. But that's fine. Once I'd painted it and given it a good coat, I set that aside to dry and it dries just fine the same on the nylon. The key took several um, coats to, to fully get the colour that I wanted, but that's okay too, I expected that. And also I wanted to give the key a really vintage look. So I'd already put on one coat and as soon as I'd done the ribbon, I gave it another. I also had a metal butterfly and I decided that I'd give that a little bit of paint just to make that blend in as well because it was a darker colour to start with. I didn't want to cover all of it but just added a bit of paint here and there to give it some gold highlights. I'd also got some printed paper and I wiped off my brush all the way around the edge of that trying to build up quite a thick layer of paint to give it an almost enamelled look to the edge there, to the border. With those pieces set aside to dry, I got my brush show crystal colours in scarlet and in brilliant red. Diluted some scarlet to start with with some water, just plain water, and used a, a clean brush to paint that onto the wooden heart. Wood being porous is ideal for brush shows. It soaks up the colour beautifully. It's an ideal wood stain. It will always stay uh, water reactive, so it's not something that you would want to get wet again necessarily, but uh, as a decoration, it's just lovely. So I painted the scarlet all around the heart, front, back and sides. I did have to mix up some extra powder as the, uh, the wood is so porous, it soaked up a lot of the stain very quickly. I then decided that actually it wasn't quite the colour that I wanted it to be. I wanted to have a stronger red. So I added some brilliant red into the mix there and painted that onto the front as well. And you can see it's a much stronger colour. So once I was happy with that, I had to leave everything then to dry overnight to make sure it was completely dry. With everything dry, and I've done a small arrangement of how I thought I would want the things to be on the heart. I used the flexi glue to glue the ribbon onto the wood in the position that I wanted. I turned that round to the back, decided where I wanted the two pieces to, to finish for the, the best look that I thought I could get to the back. Although it's only the back, it still wanted to look nice. So I trimmed off the ribbon then in the places that I wanted. I glued those down again with the flexi glue onto the nylon being non-porous and the wood being porous, but that's okay. The flexi glue does the job just wonderfully. It doesn't matter what material. However, with the nylon being non-porous, it does take time to dry. So I was far too impatient to actually hold the pieces in position for very long. So I used the bottle itself to actually hold them down in position and left that to dry for a while as well. While that was drying I turned my attention back to the key and the black acrylic paint. I used a fairly fine brush to go round the edges, the internal edges of the uh, key that's, that was already cut as well as the outside edges, make, making sure there was nothing raw that was on show but also I wanted to give the key a more vintage and antique look so this time I was using black rather than another layer of gold. I'll show you in a little while what I did with the black, but for the time being it was just to go around the edges, making sure I got into all the details, and then to set it aside to dry for a little while. So having had a little bit of time to dry, or not completely, I then gave the, the heart a bit of outlining with some black paint. My brush was almost dry by this point. There was very little paint left on it. 
So I just rub that around the, the heart to give it a bit more shading, which draws the eye to the main, to the front, the main focal point. Again, giving it a bit more of an, a vintage feel as well. Turning my attention back to the key, the paint had had a little bit of time to dry just to set slightly, but I wanted to rub it. I didn't want a hard edge to the to the key. So I rubbed the black paint all around it, possibly a little bit more than uh, I'd wanted to. But, uh, I didn't want to completely make it black, which was the way it sort of went, but that's fine. So I just used a little bit more gold paint and reapplied that, which gave it a gorgeous antique finish. So here we have some Design It paste. This was the pewter colour to Design It paste, using that through a stencil. I thought the little uh, cross hatching there, the little stitches, reminded me of sort of kisses. So I thought it was quite appropriate for the heart. So I added that in two places. Just trying to keep it flat, which wasn't completely easy at this point, but uh, it worked fine. As the pewter design it paste is quite dark, I decided to give the heart another coat, a second coat of black acrylic paint all the way around the edge. Again, this is using an almost dry brush and you'll notice I'm working from the mat, not from the pot itself or even the lid. So I'm keeping very little paint actually on the brush and transferring that to the heart. I seem to have managed to get a little bit of black on the back of the heart already. So I gave that a coat as well. Then turning my attention to gluing on the embellishments, it started with the butterfly. Again, I'm using the Flexi Glue. It works well with all materials. Stuck on the piece of paper in place. And then the key. I'd already lightly stuck on some uh, self-adhesive words, some chit-chat stickers. So I had to unpeel those because I decided I wanted to have them in 3D. So I stuck some foam onto the back of those and then restuck them back in place. Making sure I'd got enough foam on to support them along the length. But of course, over the key, it just needed to have a little bit of foam to either side of the word there to, to support that. And there we go, that's really the finishing touch. I hope you enjoyed that and can give it a thumbs up. I'm grateful for you joining us today. There are more details below the video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.